Next on BYUSN, a dominant performance for BYU men's basketball as the Cougars topple Texas on Saturday. We discuss what stood out in a unique win and was it BYU's best performance of the season? Plus, we'll talk with BYU sophomore point guard Dallin Hall about the win, playing through sickness, and what life is like as the midway point of the Big 12 season nears. Plus, the wild weekend in the Big 12 featuring upsets, court storms, and triple overtime thrillers. And there's a Cougar in the NFL Super Bowl rematch. Can't wait for that one. Fred Warner and the Niners, Andy Reid and the Chiefs. 13 days away from Super Bowl Sunday. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Monday, January 29th. I am Spencer Linton. He is Cosmo's core trainer. Jerem Jordan. Yeah. Uh, Cosmo continues to just do amazing things. So he's doing a handstand and then climbs vertically up tables. Like, how is this even possible? The balance alone to do a handstand is impressive. Let alone the, the strength. Exactly. That is amazing. I, I almost can't believe this happened. Oh. He, did, he did a similar uh, stunt in football season where he was, like, jumping up to each table as he went here it is on cue very nice um <laughs> just amazing <laughs> strength to be able to do that that's crazy that was 2022 against utah state by this the way. is unbelievable he said no no no. let me restart yeah so amazing look at that you asked me about this in the post game it's like well, what was the most impressive thing was, was it cosmo and it's like the fact that i had to pause and think for a second <laughs> i was like it says a lot about Cosmo because we were always wondering, like, what's he going to try next? I know. Just crazy. <laughs> but it's not like he's not doing stuff that's just like, uh, you know, cheap viral clicks. It's like feats of strength. Yes. And you like, like it, things like it's uh, Festivus or whatever. Feats of strength. But he can also dance like oh, nobody that's his else. Number one attribute. Unbelievable yes, stuff. We love Cosmo. He's got a game, dude. Uh, he, he flexed right there. And BYU basketball flexed. Oh, great win. Against Texas. Great win. That said, rise and shout. Let's get to what's trending. Left to Khalifa. Loda. Oh. Waterman for the hand. Dallin Hall in the paint, drops it low to Foose. First flip off the window, there it is. Jack signed an opening to the free throw lane, will duck in, fade away. But he scores it! Jackson Robinson! What's Trending? Sponsored by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Horns inverted! <laughs> well played. <laughs> BYU takes care of Texas. 84-72, the Cougars get a very important win to move to 3-4 and four in Big 12 play. 15 and 5 overall. BYU still 9 in the Ken Palm Index. They're number 6 in the net rankings. And we believe. Whoa, outside the top 5, Spence? They're going to stay oh nas- They're going to stay nationally ranked in the human polls today because they won on Saturday. And that's what happens, that's right? What you win on them? Saturday. You, win in, you, you stay ranked them in the human, the human polls, polls now. Yeah, the, the human element. The great poet Brandon Flowers once asked a question along these lines, Spencer. Are we human or are we dancer? Mm. How does that apply to Cosmo? I have no idea. But <laughs> huge game. Huge win in a huge game. Oh, man. So many impressive parts about this individual game. BYU is a seven and a half point favorite coming in. We were all kind of like, whoa. Wow, really? It's a big number. Huh. Covered. They win by 12. They were up by 17 late yeah. in the second half. They pulled away kind of like they did against Iowa State. Mm-hmm. Super impressive. And they dominated in the paint. They did it without making a ton of threes. Jerem, all that said to you, what was the most impressive thing about BYU's resounding victory against the Longhorns? It was the combination of uh, paint points, 40, most in Big 12 play, and not needing to rely on threes. This team has relied on threes, right, which isn't a bad thing. I've said before in this program, because of all the uh, gyms and the churches, we should be the best uh, three-point shooting team in the land, always. Seven for 17. Seven ties the season low. That was at Utah. And 17 is the lowest amount that BYU's taken all year. BYU got into the paint. 40 points. Let's go. I loved that. The reemergence of Foose was a big deal here. He only played 17 minutes but scored 16 points, six of seven, six boards. He just gives BYU a different look. At some point, he might even start. To me, it doesn't really matter whether Ali Khalifa starts or Foose. You have a nice one-two punch at the five there. And then the free throw line. We talked about fouls and and free throw disparity. BYU had one less foul than Texas. (laughs) It feels weird that someone else did have more fouls than BYU. Three more free throw makes, one less free throw attempt. 
the, the ability to get to the line was nice. And then you reported pregame that there was a lot of sickness on the team. We'll talk to Dallin Hall coming up. How did he fight through that sickness? Richie Saunders played well. He was sicker than a dog. Like, he didn't, wasn't with the team since Tuesday. Are you kidding me? Um, Trevin Nell as well. For BYU to win by 12 and to beat a Texas team that came in super hot, having beaten Baylor at the buzzer, and then, uh, you know, got a nice uh, win after that. I'm trying to remember. At Oklahoma. At Oklahoma. By 15. Just a top 15 uh, win there. To, to have that two-game win streak and then come into Provo and lose by 12, this was uh, one of the best, if not the best, performances from BYU all year. A couple of things really impressed me. One, BYU knew what this game meant, and the pressure was palpable. Like, they knew that they were facing, if they didn't win this game on Saturday, a three-game losing streak, dropping to one and three at home, and having two to go on the road lead. for the next two at two and five. That would have been bad. Like, they heard about it all week, and yep. it's like, oh, man, how are they going to handle this pressure? They did. Mm-hmm. They played super well. So that was very impressive. And then to continue on with your conversation of just winning in a different way, yeah. the adjustments made early in the game – and it's one thing for the coaches to notice it and tell the players, okay, like they're taking away the three-point shot. You're going to figure this out. BYU immediately did it. And Texas hit their first five threes. Mm-hmm. And I thought, this is kind of weird because this is not the scout on Texas. But BYU was scoring every time Texas was scoring, albeit it was twos. Yeah. But Texas had made five threes, and it was a four-point game. They weren't going to keep that up. No. At some point, that's going to drop off, and it did. So, BYU didn't flinch. Thought that was very impressive. So, after that, they go, what, three of uh, 17 from three? Yes. I, it, you, you make your first five, and it's like, holy cow. That, that yeah. cannot continue. Yeah. yeah, and it didn't. Yeah. And I asked Coach Pope about the adjustments and the different way that BYU won in the post game, and this was his response on going heavy from the two-point field goal range. That's a credit to Texas. It's not that we weren't trying to get them. We're trying to get them. Uh, but they really pushed out on the floor, and, and they kind of said, hey, we're going to take that away, and if you can beat us another way, beat us another way. And so um, it's a credit to them. You know, they had a great defensive game plan, and our guys just responded the best that we could. This makes BYU that much more dangerous because now the team knows, okay, well, if teams are going to refuse that we shoot a bunch of threes, well, we'll just beat them this way. And we know we can do it because we did it against Texas. Having that core memory of sorts is really, really important for BYU's confidence moving forward. Because that was the question we brought up last week. Can BYU figure out a way to win in different ways? Can they, do it, or can they extend themselves beyond just like, oh, man, they shoot a ton of threes? And the answer is a resounding yes yep. after the win against Texas. Absolutely. Um, so... Let's ask this question. Was this BYU's best performance of the season? I, I, to me, it's Iowa State versus yes. Texas wins. Yes. Double-digit victories in the Big 12 at home. I argue, Spence, Iowa State's better. I Here's agree. Ten, they were 10 in net. They're still super high in net. And uh, you got to the free throw line a million times. And, like, that was an amazing defense from Iowa State. Still top five in the country. And you put up a season high on them. So I still think that win was better. That, but this one's right there. Um, because... And, and just think about it. BYU is growing um, immeasurably before our eyes. This is a team that struggled with, with Pepperdine and whoever <laughs> last year. And now BYU is not getting blown out by any of these teams. They're competing when they lose. And they're winning some notable games. We're talking about wins against UCF and Texas and Iowa State in Big 12 play. Yeah. And, and Throw in San Diego State non-conference. San Diego State, tremendous win there. Um, NC State was a good win, too. The, this team is growing. This program is getting better and better and better to where they can take the punches and give some, uh, which is exciting. So, uh, yeah, I think it's Iowa State. You feel the same way? I do. BYU is 5-5 in quad one and quad two games now. Amazing. That's three fantastic. 3-4 and, three and four in quad one. Like, Texas was a really good win, but because it's on BYU's home floor. It's quad two. Or quad two, but a solid quad two. And to win by 12. Double-digit yeah. wins. We were asking before the Big 12 campaign began, like, How many is BYU going to have, like, yeah. some double-digit wins? They've got two against Iowa State, yeah. who just beat Kansas. Yeah, Iowa State's still 10 in net, by the way. That's BYU's best win. It absolutely is. To put up 87 on the Cyclones when Iowa State came in as arguably the best defensive team, the best disruptive team in the country – Yes, Houston disruptive, was right yes. There. number two to Houston. Number two to Houston overall yeah. defensively, yeah, yeah. but like they were the most disruptive team defensively in the entire country. And you go for 87 when they're, that was awesome. when they're holding teams to, you know, in the 50s. 
That that was wild. I love that we have two wins to discuss in this conversation because <laughs> it's not super obvious per se. Okay, before we move on to the Big 12 Roundup, on Saturday involving BYU students and horn down, horns down, KSL's Mitch Harper was the first to report on this, saying the front row of BYU student section closest to the Texas bench had white shirts with blue paint on that uh, spelled out horns down. Yeah. During the first media timeout, those students were asked to remove the shirts. What did you make of this? Because it, it was national news. I didn't think it would become as big of a deal as it did, but once it got posted on X and then Reddit gets involved and ESPN has a major that, that, headline. That tweet had 1.3 million views, by the way, from Mitch. Wild. The CBS had one that went out, had 14 million. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> like, all of these national accounts get involved here, and it just became a resounding story. I was almost kind of bummed because the game was so good. It was such a good victory for the BYU. It's not about BYU's like, winning. We're talking about yeah. students having to remove shirts that spell out horns down rather than the fact that BYU just beat up on Texas by 12. I kind of hated that. Um, I, again, I, I, I don't know how I feel about it per se. Like I, I want fans to be able to fan. Um, but I also understand that BYU kind of holds themselves, not kind of, they just do. They hold themselves to a higher standard. but Self-imposed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's probably because Rodney Terry, the head coach of Texas, made such a big deal about it during the UCF game. But then, but then he came back around and was like, eh. Yeah, like, whatever. You know, I, I th- I, in a weird way, I think it's almost complimentary to Texas because they're so, they have such a national brand and they're so good. Like, they have a specific thing that is like, the horns down thing is is directed solely at their fan base, but because they have such a because national because horns brand. up is so such a strong yes symbol exactly. Yeah. So I don't I I've talked to a bunch of Texas fans after the game, like in the stadium, what and, they, what they say? and it's like, does that bother you? And it's like, no, it's just part of the deal. I wonder if BYU, um, in an attempt to uh, you know try and be kind and and uh, understanding. Cared more about that than maybe Texas did. Sure. The, um, BYU wants to be classy. Sure. The ethos of BYU is take the higher road and, uh, you know, treat others as they would want to be treated. Because let's be honest, BYU has been treated pretty poorly over the years with religious mockery uh, on yeah. the road and whatnot. BYU so, fans get they, – they don't like sure. it when, when fans show up dressed like missionaries. and like, we, we think that's like a sacred calling, right, That uh, to be a missionary sure. is a thing. So when you mock that, it's not received in the same way. So, yeah, the ethos of BYU is to take the high road. It is, and they did it again. And, and to be clear, to be clear, you know this, and, and, and I asked and found this out, Texas did not complain. Texas did not ask. They did not mention anything. This was self-imposed. BYU chose to, hey, let's not do that. You, you go back to um, BYU played, I believe it was St. Mary's on a Thursday, the week after the Vikings Saints game where Bill Vinovich was the ref. And he had missed a huge call in the football game. Missed a huge call in that game, pass eye that cost Saints going to the Super Bowl, I believe. Yep. Um, and then he, he ref that Thursday, and there was a sign that said uh, something about, hey, saints, and don't mess this one up with these saints kind of thing. And that sign was removed as well. This isn't the first incident where BYU has tried and, you know, hey, let's not do that level of this. So <laughs> it's happened before. Yeah. They will always take the high road. Uh, that, this is the, the administration yes. has made that clear. It, and, and BYU wants to uh, be friends with everybody in the league. That's why we do the big stories. That's why there's a big stories podcast. Um, so, it, yeah. It, it, That's why we just is. changed the phrasing to horns inverted. All horns good. inverted. <laughs> 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 that note, on to the Big 12 roundup That's, we go. <laughs> at, the next, at the next game, there's horns, horns inverted. inverted. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, that one's still not okay. <laughs> oh, very funny. Hey, what a wild triple Horns over- not up. What a wild triple overtime game between TCU and Baylor, huh? 105-102. I watched all three OTs of this in my office after uh, the post game, getting ready for volleyball. It erased, uh, TCU erased the second half deficit to win. Jacoby Walter had a three to tie the game with the second left in uh, the first OT. Jameer Nelson Jr. scored 30 in this one. Baylor's third straight loss after starting 3-0. Three, uh, three and oh. TCU 4-3, and three. TCU hosts Texas Tech Wednesday, Baylor plays at UCF Wednesday. How about Crazy that? Game. Baylor's got a three-game losing streak. BYU does not, by the way. 2-2-2-1. Two, 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 I mentioned this just a few moments ago. Number 23, Iowa State upset seventh-ranked Kansas at Hilton. Iowa State doesn't lose at home. They're undefeated on their home floor, 79-75. They're 13-0 on their home court. 
Trey King had 21 points to lead the Cyclones. This is Kansas' third road loss in Big 12 play. Four and three record overall, which marks the worst start for a Bill Self coach Kansas team in Big 12 play Whoa. ever. Whoa! They've never been four and three through seven games. That's how dominant That's how they tough have it been. Is. Yeah. Kansas hosts Oklahoma State tomorrow. That's a win. <laughs> Iowa State has a midweek bye, yes. like BYU, yeah. before the Cyclones take on Baylor as the Bears try and end the three-game losing streak at home. What if Baylor loses? On set, then the four straight losses potentially for Baylor? Ranked matchup, Texas Tech beat Oklahoma by one, 85-84 in Norman, Oklahoma, led by as many as nine. Chance McMillan's 27 points for the Red Raiders helped to come back. Wow, Oklahoma visits Kansas State tomorrow. Texas Tech visits TCU. BYU has the same record as 11th ranked Oklahoma in the league, three and four. TCU, te- Texas Tech, best team in the league by record, five and one. They would, they would have been four and two. You <sighs> held on. That was a tough one. Fourth ranked Houston, this just in, really good. <laughs> Look at that, 74 52 over a solid both, Kansas State team. They were both four and two walking into the game in the league. Spence. Houston's undefeated on their home floor, and are now 18 and two overall. They're deserving every bit of that top four ranking. They might jump up a few spots. We'll see. Kansas State now 4-3 and three in their seven Big 12 games. The Wildcats will host Oklahoma tomorrow. Houston plays at Texas tonight. I love that the Big 12 happens on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's kind of fun. BYU has one non-Tuesday league game, by the way. That's it. It's at Iowa State on March 6th. Oklahoma State beats West Virginia. Oklahoma State's first win in league. They now 1-6. West Virginia, next, BYU's next opponent, loses to the quote-unquote worst team in the league. That is rat poison for BYU, so be careful of that one. Cowboys' Javon Small had a go-ahead three with 53 seconds left. West Virginia 2-5. and five. The season's yet to win a road game in league. Oklahoma State at Kansas tomorrow. West Virginia hosts Cincinnati on Wednesday and then Brigham said. Yeah, uh, West Virginia at home, much different team than, you know, the opposite. Like, the, the road and home teams are very, very different for the Mountaineers. Cincinnati storms back, trailing early against UCF. We're losing considerably at halftime, but dominate in the second half to win by 11, 68-57. They did the same thing against BYU and Provo. Yep. Again, after training by 12 at halftime, they outscore the Golden Knights 41-18 to 18 in the second half. Cincinnati plays at West Virginia. UCF hosts Baylor both on Wednesday. Those are the Big 12 roundup games, which now brings us to the updated Big 12 standings. The log jam is always a point of conversation. Look at Kansas, okay? So they're the fourth place team at four and three. And UCF is three and four. They're at number 12. There's one game separating teams four through 12, seven in. BYU a part of that at three and four. Listen, as long as BYU can hover around 500, it'll be great. Because you're pacing for kind of an eight and 10, 10 and eight situation somewhere in that in that uh, three-game set, and that would give you a single-digit seed. It really would. And be a seven, five, six, or seven. The challenge for BYU this week, obviously, is to get a road split. I'm talking not just this week, but looking ahead to Oklahoma as well after West Virginia. The next Mm -hmm. two are on the road. If BYU can win Win one of those. West Virginia. Win one of those and be four and five coming home. Yes, I don't need a win at Oklahoma, but that would sure be nice. BYU will have some opportunities on their home floor after these two road games, again, to, to pick up some big-time wins in the Marriott Center and maybe get to 500. Yeah. No, no, no. Just be near 500. We good. <laughs> this is a grind, man. It's another Mailbag Monday. You asked the questions about BYU sports that are on your mind. We answered them on the show. Alex Beach on X app offers this inquiry. Do you think the way BYU played on Saturday – Fewer three-point attempts, more driving to the basket. Is the blueprint for how they will play the rest of the season, or was it a strategy just for the Texas game? It's a great question, Alex. Uh, it depends how BYU is guarded. And they were uh, allowing BYU to get to the rim a little more. And so that's the they, they, they were not going to let BYU beat them by the three-point shot. So it depends. Don't forget, BYU just played arguably the best, uh, not just defense in the Big 12, defense in the country in Houston – could not rebound, could not get at the rim in the same way that they normally could. Most teams can't defend like Houston and Iowa State. And so, uh, you know, BYU did good against Iowa State, did not as much against Houston, but Houston's like Final Four good. Yes. So it's, it's just different, right? Um, each game is going to be different, and that game yielded more shots at the rim and fouls to get to the line. If teams not named Houston and Iowa State, to your point, are going to try and 
take away BYU's three-point shot, then yes, you can expect more of that. And UCF's a good defensive team, too. That was hard, right? That was a tough game. BYU granted that one out. Hashtag BYUS on X, Facebook, and Instagram to ask your Mailbag Monday questions. Okay, BYU does not play early in the week, have a bye of sorts, so the next game is at West Virginia coming up on Saturday. Radio pregame at 5 Eastern on BYU Radio. Joining us next, after a flu game of sorts, BYU's sophomore hey. point guard Dallin Hall in studio to discuss what went into that win at Texas. And how's he feeling right now? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Hall squeezes it up and, and scores one. it and one again. Dallin Hall locks it up to Atiki. Dallin Hall spots an opening drive and oh. dunk. Oh, wow. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play. Happy Monday. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Using context clues, I'm guessing you know who's in studio with us now. It is the BYU sophomore star point guard, Dallin Hall. Dallin, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me back. It's a happy Monday. It is a happy Monday. And listen, you told us that at some point you were going to throw down a big dunk. (laughs) This is really our first opportunity to talk about what happened on that dunk in the Houston game. We just saw it. Walk, walk us through that play, the one that you delivered on your promise on. Right. Um, came down the lane. There was no one there, surprisingly. <laughs> um, so I just rose up, and the last second I was like, I might as well dunk this thing. So <laughs> luckily I got up enough. I actually, you know, I have lost the ball for a sec, and so luckily I was able to get it back and dunk it. But it's good to get one. It was oh. a teeth grinder. Oh, I loved it. Oh, oh <laughs> it was awesome. Man. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so you have to regroup after that, the disappointment of that. And then in comes Texas. They come in super hot, have won two games in a row against ranked teams. How were you guys able to summon the performance you had, which was arguably the best of the year? Yeah, I think uh, just staying, you know, even no matter what the results are, that's kind of key in this conference. Like this conference is trying to tear teams apart and beat you up and, and see what you're really made of. And I feel like it really showed who we were as a team and we were able to stay together. And so that was a huge test for us. I love how we responded. Obviously, there's going to be more in the future, but I think that's a good testament to the kind of team we are. Dallin, before the game, I was speaking with the team doctors and they were kind of jokingly saying, but half seriously saying, I don't know if there are more sick people on the roster right now (laughs) or more healthy guys. We'll see what happens. But Man, to your credit, uh, you and Richie Saunders and Trevin Nell and some others that had to play through sickness, you do so knowing that, like, okay, if we can just get through today, we got a week to rest. Right. What was that like for you going into the game, knowing that not – not, I mean, half the roster was, was sick and you had to play through that? Yeah, I think uh, it's obviously one of the challenges that um, many teams are facing at this time of year. And for us, like – Coach does a really good job of making sure we're taking care of taking care of our bodies during the week. We have great athletic trainer and Rob Ramos, um, and so they provide us with the the help that we need. And then ultimately, it's just like you go out there and play through it because you have so much love for your, the brothers on your team that uh, they've done it before. It was our turn that night, and so we just did it for each other. It was the reemergence of Foose game. He was good in the last like ten minutes against Houston, right? But in this game, despite only 17 minutes, the dude scored 16 points, 6 of 7, 6 points. What is it like to have him back to where you can throw it in the post and have that option? Ali has that game, but it's been more of a five-out thing with him. Yeah, no, it's huge because teams are scouting us. um, They're trying to throw different ball screen coverages at us, and a lot of teams resort to a switch because they just can't handle the shooters. And so... You can't switch on Foose. I mean, we talk about it. We say it's food as soon as you give it to him in the post. Like, he's going to go score. And what's awesome about Foose, and I think somewhere he's grown a lot this year, is he's now really being able to make the right play, too. Like, if a guy helps, he's kicking it to a wide-open shooter. So teams are just paralyzed. And it's awesome to see him back. He's going to help us a ton. We knew it would come along. Like, it's hard to come back mid-Big 12 season. And so it was just a matter of time, and he's loving it, and we're loving it, too. Dallin Hall is with us on BYU Sports Nation, and Foose was a big part of winning in a different way on Saturday. He scored a ton in the paint. I mean, dominated Texas in the paint. At what point in the game did you realize, okay, clearly they're not going to allow us to take three-point shots. We're, we're going to dominate the paint. When did that change? 
Yeah, I think it was pretty early on, just like coming off ball screens, realizing the defense was super extended. Um, I think that's kind of how teams are approaching us more and more as time goes on, just because of the way we shoot it. And we did a really good job of finishing our cuts. Like Noah early on had a few really great back cuts, and Ali was finding the right guys. And so I think we do a good job of just taking what the defense gives us. Like ultimately, we just try and play the best brand of team basketball, and that's what it was that night. Fouls and free throws have been an issue, right? Um, but you have one fewer foul in this game than Texas, and you make more free throws, and you only take one fewer free throw. What role do those things have on the success of this team moving forward? It's huge. Guarding legal is something we really try and emphasize. We haven't done the greatest job so far in conference play, and so that was a big step forward for us with a physical team like Texas. And then, yeah, getting to the free throw line, you know, I think that helps us a lot because then defenses have to start worrying about inside and it'll reopen for, for our shooters. And so I thought it was a good balance, a good mix, and we just played a little bit smarter on defense. Which is interesting because this, uh, this team is made to get layups and threes, which are the most efficient shots in basketball, right? It's not like you're going to get to the free throw line 25 times a game every game. Right. Iowa State was awesome that way. But if you can just make that disparity just a little less – and you make more threes. That feels like a key to success. No, absolutely. Uh, I think we can continue to do better on the defensive end, being smarter on them, which fouls we have. Uh, I thought the rock was huge at the game, making them miss some free throws. And so, uh, yeah, just room for growth. And that's what's exciting is we do have a lot of room to grow as a team. Coach Pope has been very transparent about the importance of your role on this team, both on the offensive and defensive sides of the floor getting into some foul trouble against Houston, so you had to sit on the bench. And then, of course, you're dealing with sickness on Saturday, so you had to take some breathers. Like, how, how are, is your team accommodating when you are not on the floor? What are you doing to try and maintain that level of play when the starting point guard's not on the floor? Yeah, I think it's just that same mentality that we've talked about all season is next guy up. Um, so I get in that foul trouble, and Jax slides over to the point guard position, and it's just next guy up. And guys who are coming off the bench understand that we're just as deadly as a team because we have those same shooters out there, um, the same post presence. And obviously it's frustrating when I'm not able to be out there, but I'm just trying my best on the bench to, to help those guys see what I see when I'm out there. And they do a great job just stepping up and playing with confidence. Now that you're seven games into the 18-game Big 12 schedule, what's it been like to play the teams you play? every week and uh, physically, emotionally, mentally? Because from our vantage point, it is fun, but you're in the fight every day. Yeah, it is fun for me too, honestly. Like, it's a dream come true. Like, my goal since I was a you know, kid that big was to play against the best players in the world. And so to have that stage every night is, is a dream come true. And I know it's a platform for BYU and a lot of the players on our roster that they've always wanted. And so we're just trying to go out there and make the most of it and and put our best foot forward and win a lot of games. Did you ever think you'd feel good at three and four? Like, we feel <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. In the toughest conference in America, it's like, hey, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, no, there's like that sentiment of we're doing well. Uh, we've really competed. Obviously, we're a little frustrated um, because we feel like we could be at a way even better place right now. But you just got to take it for what it is and move forward. And so that's what we're doing. We're not going to dwell on the past. We're just going to learn from it and, and try and make our way up the rankings. Aside from getting the obvious rest that your team needs and, and getting healthy, what's priority number one this week to get ready for West Virginia on Saturday? Uh, I think priority number one is to, to get fresh. Like Coach talks a lot about that on our days off. Uh, so I think today will be huge for us to get back in the gym, be fresh, uh, take care of our bodies this week and then mentally prepare for West Virginia because they're a team that's beat, you know, a lot of good teams at yep. their place. Kansas and Texas notably. Right. So we're going to go in with a bunch of confidence because we've earned it. That's what kind of team we are, but we're also going to respect them and bring our A game. You assume the toughest version of them because the weakest version of them showed up on Saturday losing to Oklahoma State, but you assume the Kansas version is going to show up, right? Sure, sure. Okay, so um, what, what's, what's it like to be midseason – but, but how do you relax a little bit? Because you're a Lord of the Rings, you're a Star Wars, you're a Marvel guy. You're, these are the things we like too. <laughs> what, what, what are you, what are you, uh, how do you relax mid-season like this? Um, when I'm not doing my finance homework. <laughs> you have basketball uh, and finance. So yeah. You're a busy dude. No. Um, 
I don't know, me and the boys, two nights ago maybe, three nights, sat down and watched episode three of Star Wars. Just relax. Randomly, Revenge of the Yeah, Sith. just, we're just sitting there like, let's throw it on, you know? Like a, it's kind of a heavy movie, <laughs> right? To relax. <laughs> That's true. But it's just such a classic, so... I don't know. Maybe watch a movie is probably my answer for relaxing. There you go. Hey, what do you do to relax? Watch Order 66. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa. Gets me, gets me back. <laughs> gets me dialed in. It's just a great way to calm just down. Just a real you know? calming movie. <laughs> yep. Dallin Hall is with us on BYU Sports Nation. You mentioned finance. I know that you uh, you care a lot about your schoolwork and your education. So, you know, part about balancing schoolwork along with playing basketball because – Basketball is like a full-time job. Oh, and you go to school as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the toughest part is missing classes, like when we're traveling. Uh, luckily, we have uh, Jess Mullen, who's our kind of mentor. She does a fantastic job of helping all of us. Uh, we're a tough bunch to help, and she really handles it. <laughs> but uh, she gets us tutors, and then I'd just say the hardest part is missing, like, those lectures yeah. and trying to get back on the What's same page. What's your favorite class here? Ooh, my favorite class? Right now, I'm in a Judaism and Islam class. I took that one. Yeah. I loved it. So I'm trying to learn yeah. a little bit more about Islam with some of my teammates having yeah. that personal faith. Awesome. Yeah. You can ask questions, right? Too. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, tell me about them. Trying to understand a little bit more about their background, and hopefully we can have some good conversations. Super cool. That's really cool. Like, uh, And I respect a ton about Islam with the salats and the beads. And it's just they, they do some things that I think we can do better, which is like they're always thinking about God. Yeah. Always. Constantly. Um, what do you want to do with a finance degree? Ooh, uh, I th- I'm hoping to get in the strategy program. I don't know if I'm allowed to like say that on here. <laughs> uh, yes, you are. Yeah, uh, you can do that. Uh, yeah, um, whoever lets me in, <laughs> shout out them. <laughs> but hopefully, I can get in the strategy program. Um, taking finance to just kind of understand uh, that aspect a little bit better, and don't know what I want to do after that, but just ride hoops as far as I can and figure it out after that. Outstanding. We'll finish with this. We, we mentioned you're at West Virginia on Saturday. I know it's Monday. You'll, you're going to go through some pretty intense tape review and, and film review, whatever we call it. Do we, do we call it just footage review Digital at this point? Footage. Digital yeah, footage I don't, review. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, coach is to say watching tape. So you're going to do a lot of it this week, but what do you know about them other than they've got a couple of big home wins? Um, I think we know that it's going to be a physical battle, and we know that that arena is crazy. Like, that's what we've heard, and we're excited to be able to play in that environment. But every game in the Big 12 is just a physical battle. And so, like you guys were saying, there's no nights off. So we know what we're stepping into, and, and we're going to be prepared. That's just the kind of character and culture that we've built as a team. Is there any other Korg impersonation or anything else you want to <laughs> deliver? Because that's kind of what we do here. Uh, I don't know. I got a I got a decent <laughs> King Julian one. That I oh, King Julian. Time. Okay, Maybe let's hear next time. Oh, for next time. Okay, for next time. We're working on it. A little build up. You yeah. Know? Okay. It's called the tease in the bis. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Good. We can appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay, King Julian next time. Yep. We talked to Dallas. It's gonna it's gonna take it easy tomorrow. Maybe watch Rogue One. Yeah. <laughs> just, yes, the end scene. The, the last twenty minutes just really really <laughs> settle you down. Get me back in the zone. We took we took our kids to this, and I was kind of like shielding their eyes on that last scene. Like, maybe don't watch Darth Vader uh, cook here. <laughs> Let yeah. him cook. A little intense. Uh, Dallin, good, great to have you with us. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate good you Good luck guys. against it's West Virginia on Saturday. Hey, Thank check, you. check out BYU Basketball with Mark Pope uh, this Thursday, every Thursday. This uh, year, 8.30 Eastern time on the BYU TV app and ESPN+. Plus. A loaded whip around on the way, including a rematch of Cougars into Super Bowl in a couple of weeks. How about that? An actual moral victory. And maybe the best hype woman ever at BYU. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media for content throughout the day on Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to Studio B on a Monday. I am Spencer Linton. He is Jerem Jordan. Let's roll out. A busy Monday full of headlines. Men's hoops beats Texas 84-72 thanks to five Cougars scoring in double figures. Jackson Robinson, Noah Waterman each led with 17 points. Noah's scored 17 plus in three straight, by the way. Boost with 16 points at A-boards in 17 minutes. 
Spencer Johnson, Richie Saunders each scored 11 as well. BYU 15 and 5 on the year, 3 and 4 in the Big 12. Despite the win, BYU falls number 6 in the net. Oh no! Falls out of the top five for the first time <laughs> since net came out this year. Number 9 in Kempom. It's great. BYU has a midweek bye, won't play again until they play at West Virginia on Saturday. I'm glad you mentioned Noah. Is he the most underappreciated player on the roster right now? He's quietly Perhaps, like being yeah. awesome. He's playing really, really good. BYU women's basketball in a little bit of a shocker, albeit a heartbreaker, against fourth-ranked Kansas State. They lose 67-65. Had Almost a shot had at the end to tie it from Kaylee Smiler, but Almost the jumper didn't go. Him. BYU had multiple opportunities in the last minute to tie or take the lead. Could not get the shot to fall. Lauren Gustin with her second 2020 game of the season. She had 25 points and 21 rebounds mm. against the number four team in the country at their place. Let's go. I know they were missing a few key parts were the Wildcats, but still, not, hey, not our problem. come on. Not our problem. BYU now 12-9 and nine on the season, 2-6 and six in Big 12 play up next. Big one against Kansas on Wednesday at the historic Fog Allen Fieldhouse. BYU wins that game. That'd be a huge road split for the Cougars. Cougars in the NFL playoffs. Fred Warner helped the Niners to a 17-point second-half comeback win, 34-31 over the Lions to advance to the Super Bowl. Warner had a game-high 13 tackles, TFL, and a PBU. Niners will rematch with Andy Reid's Chiefs in the Super Bowl after the Chiefs beat the Ravens 17-10. Andy Reid's fourth Super Bowl appearance with Chiefs, fifth overall. Amazing. Kyle Van Noy, three tackles and a TFL in the loss for the Ravens. Eighth-ranked BYU men's volleyball drops two matches to UC Irvine <sighs> in four sets on Friday and in a five-set thriller on Saturday. The losses end BYU's 18-match home win streak. Cougars now 7-3 and three on the season and will work to bounce back against Long Island beginning this, or rather, next Thursday. Track and field, the women's distance group had five runners finished with program top 10 times on Saturday at the John Thomas Terrier Classic in Boston, including Jenna Hutchins, Lexi Halliday-Lowry, and Aubrey Frenthaway, who finished second, third, and fourth in the 5K, separated by a total of seven-tenths of a second. How about that? Riley Chamberlain and Carmen Alder, both had program top tens in the mile as well. And former Cougar Anna Camp Bennett won the mile. That's awesome. Let's continue with the track and field news. Another group from BYU track and field competing at the Bob Pollock Invitational at Clemson. Some notable performances from the Cougars include Jaden Ross Kelly winning the men's heptathlon, Sammy Oblad winning the women's 800 meters, and Sierra Tidwell Alfin, incredible high jumper. Yeah, she wins the high jump there as well and adds to her resume. Yeah, she's, uh, she's awesome, man. Men's tennis drops a road match at UC Irvine Friday 6-1 to fall to 1-3 on the season. Wally Thane was the lone Cougar to win in the singles match. And Thane and Zach Fuchs were the lone winning doubles team. And men's golf is at the Arizona Intercollegiate uh, today and tomorrow at Arizona in Tucson at the uh, Omni or Omni, if you want the Book of Mormon version, uh, <laughs> son of Jerem, uh, Tucson National Resort. There we go. Now, that wraps up our headlines. Some opinions, shall we? In the whip. Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Women's Hoops lost by two at number four Kansas State. On Friday, you called for, hey, compete. Perhaps that'd be a moral victory there. Was that what you were looking for? Yes, but I'm frustrated. <laughs> uh, it absolutely is a moral victory. Like, you can build off something like that when you have a young team and a true freshman backcourt in Kaylee Wilson and Amari Whiting. Uh, yeah, you can build off of that, but... Because it was so close, you had, you had a chance. there's frustration there, right? I, I was, like I said, I would have been happy if BYU were within 15 points. Like 10 would have felt like, whoa, wow, yeah, nice job. They had a chance to win, legitimately win the game. So there's frustration within that moral victory. Kansas State up to number two today, by the way. people and women's best. Amazing. We had a chance to take down number two. Yes, they did. They're capable of greatness. Kirk Bowles of the Austin American Statesman, we featured his articles and comments a few times on the show, posted this about the Big 12 basketball standings <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> Is this an accurate representation of what the Big 12 standings feel like right now? Because he said, current Big 12 basketball standings are how they kind of look right now. Has 12 teams tied for first? <laughs> what it feels, no, he's not wrong. And then like, West Virginia and Oklahoma there's State. There's obviously a separation between a few of these teams, West Virginia and Oklahoma State notably. That's why BYU's got to go win at West Virginia yeah, this yeah, Saturday. Yeah. But it's th those are still tough games. Like Those are not automatic. Like In the WCC, when BYU would play like at Portland, we'd be like, listen, you got to go win that game. Come on. And then there were times where BYU would lose those games sometimes. Yes. There was so much pressure There's, to not lose a bad game. It was more to not lose more to, than more to win. 
Yeah. And that's not the case now for BYU, so that's pretty funny. There will probably only be one of those games all season where BYU fans are thinking, okay, that would be a bad loss, and it's Oklahoma State in it's Provo. At, yeah, yes, that's the only That's the only game. That's the only one. Right? Because that would be a quad three yeah. loss. Yeah. It's the only game on the entire Big 12 schedule. Yeah. It's like, don't lose that one. Yeah. Women's distance runners uh, competed in Boston over the weekend, as we mentioned. Flow Track posted this video of uh, Jenna Hutchins, Lexi Halliday Lowry, Aubrey Frenthway finishing second, third, and fourth. But, uh, you know, Diljit Taylor, the coach, going crazy. <laughs> Was this actually a video of you at the BYU Texas game? I tried my best to contain myself on press row. <laughs> You're on press row. You can't no, In fact, I have people comment often, like, how are you not losing it down there on press row? And it's like, you, you just, learn to you not. just get used to it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, there will be a few moments where I'm like, whoa. Or like, mm. like I probably let my face kind of like, and there's a questionable call. I probably have like some facial expressions that would suggest I agree or disagree. But outside of that, like, yeah, no. Thankfully, I'm not doing what Dilji Taylor does because if I did, I would not be on press row for much longer. <laughs> nope. No, you would not. What's funny now is when there's a review in volleyball, there's a couple of fans that I look at and I tell them whether it was like a, you know, in, out, or touch. <laughs> and so the other day, I just kind of turn around and I'm like, and they're like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, we see it. Yeah. Because they just that. sit there and they're waiting yes. and we're like seeing all these angles. They have no idea. I love, I love Diljeet though. Yeah, like, she's Oh awesome. my gosh. Okay. The, the run for her mantra and campaign that she has going at BYU is something special. Yeah. And her in that is the little girl that fell in love with running. Yes. That's what it's in love. I love that. All right. BYU men's volleyball. Ugh. Speaking of uh, you giving clues and context to uh, the crowd behind you. They're not going to like back-to-back losses against UC Irvine. What did you learn about BYU over the weekend? Listen, BYU's good, but uh, UC Irvine's uh, very good. And uh, so it was tough. Um, BYU got kind of worked on the, the first night on Friday and Saturday. BYU competed better, came back, uh, forced a fifth set, and uh, had too many errors. BYU had three foot faults oh. in the fifth set there and hit the ball out a couple times. So, yeah, BYU's got a lot to learn, but uh, BYU's still 7-3 and three and a good team. And... Uh, and MPSF play in conference, they got to bring it to uh, try and get an at-large to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I don't if think... If they don't win that tournament. Irvine's really good, for sure. Um, unfortunately, there's, they're just growing pain still for, for this team, which is still in some places really young. And um, I, I think they're a top-10 team, for sure. I, I don't think they should drop yeah. in the rankings. But if BYU's outside the top four or five, they're not like yeah. one of the top ones. That's Top four is the elite level, right? So yeah. BYU's still got some work to do, for they're sure. They're in the next group right outside there. As mentioned in headlines, we have uh, Andy Reid, Fred Warner, Super Bowl rematch. Uh, after the Chiefs win, Colorado head coach Deion Sanders called Andy Reid, coach him. <laughs> like he is him. <laughs> Andy Reid is a man. I love him as a man, a coach, and a friend. He is coach him. He's right. <laughs> I just love the phrasing. He is coach, he is coach him. him. He also called Travis Kelsey him. He's like, Travis Kelsey is him, and coach Andy Reid is coach him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's been fun to see Andy. Andy built off what he learned from Lavelle. Like, Lavelle is the GOAT here, but Andy Reid is the greatest coach to ever come from BYU. Like, unbelievable stuff. Man. And Andy Reid is no so question. quick to mention all of the people that the helped him get to from the point. Lavelle. He is at right now, yeah. for sure. Pretty awesome. Uh, hopefully we get to talk to him again, maybe after another Super Bowl win. We'll see. If not, maybe Perhaps. it's Fred Warner after his Super Bowl win. I'm all in on the Chiefs because I'm a Seahawks fan. <laughs> <laughs> In for Fred? And for Andy. No. Oh. Fred, Fred, yes, but not the Niners. Yeah. yeah. No way. <laughs> Up next, a few more of your Mailbag Monday questions are going to be answered. This is BYU Sports Nation. Was that the best win of the season for BYU basketball? This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B. As promised, some more of your Mailbag Monday questions, beginning with this from Elijah Foster, who asks on Facebook, who has been the big surprise this year for the BYU men's basketball team? There have been so many surprises, just generally speaking about the team overall, but which player has Mm. been the biggest surprise? Noah Waterman. Noah Waterman is playing like we were thinking he might be able to play coming into last year, but he has elevated beyond that. He's more than just a three-point shooter. He's become a, a good defender and a tremendous rebounder. Gamer. 
like gamer t willing to take the big shot and more often than not recently has made the big shot. He was yeah. the guy that tied it up against Houston, like put BYU in position to potentially win that game. Last three, 17 plus, man. And he's playing good defense, hitting the glass. If it's not Noah Waterman, it's Ali Khalifa. We all knew Ali was going to be a, an important cog for this BYU team. We did not think he would lead the country in assist to turnover ratio and would be like so, so good in that regard. Yeah. How many people thought that the offense would run through Dallin Hall and Ali Khalifa? Because it has for the majority of the season. Dallin, we thought so, yeah, because he's the point guard. But Ali, like, no. Ali. We didn't think it'd be that effective. Like, he has, awesome. like, I knew he was a good passer. He has shocked me with how he's good better. he's been. Like, yeah. statistically speaking, the best big passing man in the entire country. The best big passer? Big passing man. <laughs> big passer. Yeah, love it. The Crocs all on Instagram. How did Saturday's loss to Kansas State hurt BYU women's basketball? Are they in trouble of not making the tournament? What do you think? You call the game. I think they needed to beat Kansas State. They need, like, one of those or maybe two of those just, whoa, mm -hmm. wins. Like, if BYU had one at Kansas State, and then let's say they go in, in a little bit of a revenge match against Shaley Gonzalez to close out the season, they win at Texas. and their Just Shaley, not Texas? Their records. <laughs> just well, kidding. You know what I'm saying. Their records floating around, you know, two games below 500, but you have yeah. some quality wins, and you're pushing 20 victories overall. Now you've got, like, an outside shot to be a bubble team and get into the tournament. Like, the, the road's really tough. You're 12-9. and nine, You're 2-6. and six. It's going to take something extraordinary for BYU to even hop back in the tournament conversation. Right now they're pacing to be an NIT team, and I think they'll win a few games in the NIT. WNIT is 64 teams as well. It's a bit easier than it is in the men's where it's half the amount of teams. So, yeah, hopefully BYU can get some notable wins and be bubblicious. And if yeah. they don't make it, they're building with the freshman backcourt. But you do lose Lauren Gustin. So it's hard not to kind of use her amazing senior year here. Losing Nani Falatea was a big deal. Like, Nani, 100%. Nani leaving the team was a big deal. I think if Nani's on this team... And Ari, losing, could, losing Ari. And Ari, of course, yeah, with the ACL. I think if you have those two, you, you are making the You tournament. have a tournament-caliber yeah. team. Yeah. They're going to need yeah. to go 6-4 and four in the back 10 games. That's asking a lot. And, and that would include, like, two or three ranked wins. Like, that, that's a that's Tough a to ask a freshman backcourt to do that. It's not all on them, but they're a huge cog here. For sure. Yeah. Our elite mailbag question of the day presented by Pax Healthcare Elevated comes from Jason Barlow on Facebook, who asks, with BYU having four ranked teams to play as of right now on the men's side, how many do you think BYU could realistically win? The mm. ranked games he's referencing are at Oklahoma. Again, these are as rankings as of now. Versus Baylor and Provo at Kansas at Iowa State. One. One, one win. Yeah. Two is asking a lot because three are on the road. At Oklahoma, they've shown that they're vulnerable. Uh, even at BYU home. could win that game, and BYU could absolutely beat Baylor at home. At Kansas, at Iowa State, those are the two toughest road venues in the league. Those are death traps. Those, yes. those venues Iowa are State death traps for Iowa State is unbelievable at home against yes. ranked teams. At Kansas, obviously tough. But Baylor at home, that's the one I say, hey, go get that one. One, one would be good. Two would be Amazing. It's less about ranked teams and more about net teams, like where they're ranked in net, honestly. Like BYU, Ranking's fun, but it doesn't mean that much. BYU beating TCU and Kansas State in Provo would do just as much as like BYU winning against Baylor at home would do. Yeah. In terms of like metrics. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'd say, yeah, I'm with you. Good One, question. Good question. Two would be elite. Woo. Okay, if you miss any interviews, trending topics, deep blues, big stories, all that stuff. You can catch it on BYUSN.com or the free BYU TV app. Up next, one of my favorite moments from Saturday's game, and there were many, happened to be with a special guest in the Marriott Center. We'll discuss that next with a special rise and shout out. This is BYUSN. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. The, the emotions were palpable when Sean Bradley was back in the Marriott Center and honored during a timeout, standing ovation. What was tears, that like in the venue? Tears in his eyes. Like, a lot of people were shedding tears. Like, it just, he is such an example of resilience. Paralyzed from a bicycle accident in his neighborhood <sighs> in St. George. Great to have Sean in the house. They got him in the locker room. Mark Pope talked about how Sean wrote Mark a seven-page letter when Mark was a freshman at UW. Awesome. And the relationship that they had as, as members of the church in the NBA. Pretty cool. Love Sean. So great Later, to have him right, back. In the NBA. Yeah, awesome. you betcha. Our thanks to today's guest, Dallin Hall of BYU Basketball. Sorry to Dennis Pitta and the Ravens. Uh, ran out of time. The conversation continues 24-7 on X. 
Instagram, Facebook, this and all our shows on demand on BYUSN.com. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to one of Sean Bradley's former teammates, John Fish. Oh, nice. We'll see you tomorrow back here in Studio B for another loaded edition of BYUSN. Go Cougs!